Good morning, everybody. As we go to the chitas of the day, today is Friday. We are holding the sixth reading of the Torah in the portion of Ayeda. We're holding on chapter 21, verse number 22. Ayi ba'isa hi. Now it came to pass at that time, Ayem avi melech, and avi melech said, Fichol sa'at tzvay, and Fichol is general, said to Abraham, Flamer, Lekimi mecha, the Abish is with you. The Abish God is with you, whatever you do. Why did he say that for? Because he saw that he had come out of the region of Sdoim Unscathed, and they had fought with the kings, and they fell into his hands. And his wife was remembered with an, a child in his old age. So he saw that this was a holy, godly man. So therefore, he said, let's make a bond. And now swear to me by God. That you will not lie to me, nor to my son, nor to my grandson. The kindness that I've done to you, Tasi Madi, do for me. And the land where you have lived. So now she says, we see over here that a father <coughs> can go three generations. To my son, to my grandson, and great grandson. When I said to you, here, my land is before you. So, I have been kind to you. I hope I may land for you. You should be kind to me. Avram So Avram said, I'll make the vow. Avram contended with Avimelech. On the wells, that the water, the servants of the Gazu of the Melech. On the wells of water, which the servants of Avimelech stole from him. It actually disputed it concerning this. He told me, you know, I have dug some wells and your servants have taken it away. But Yem Avi Melech, Avi Melech says, Leia Daiti, I do not know. Me also stop I never, I don't know who did this. The Gamatale you haven't told me. The Gamalechle Shamaiti, I never heard of this until today. You can't blame me on something that I don't know. Avram took cattle, flock and cattle. He gave it to Avimelech. And they made a covenant. Avram took place seven Ulam by himself. So Avram said, Why are you taking these seven lambs? I should said, take these seven lambs from my hand. So they'll, in order to be for me a witness, that I have dug these wells. So I'm making a pact. In order that to be for me, Le'edah's expression of testimony. Avimelech shepherd said, they dug it. They agreed among themselves that wherever would appear besides the well and the water would rise to him, the well was his. And they, the waters, rose towards Avram. That's why this place is called until today, Be'er Sheva. The, the well of seven. Isham Nish Bushem goes there, they made a pact on the seven lambs. And they made a covenant. One of the ways to make a covenant is by giving somebody else a, a gift. They gave him the seven, seven lambs as, so to say, as a transaction. And Avimelech arose 
and he went back to the land of Pushtim. Rabbi Melech was from Pushtim. Verse 23, 33. Yita Eshel Be'er Sheva and planted an Eshel, a tree in Be'er Sheva. Vayikishon B'Shem Hashem Kel Elyein and he called out in the name of God. Shirashi says, Eishel, the machlekes, the argument of Gemara, Rav and Shmuel. One said it was an orchard in which to bring fruits for the guests, the meals. And one said it was an inn. Eishel is an inn, a lodging, in which there was all sorts of fruits. We find the expression Eishel, Metia, used in conduction with tents. And he, Vayita, he pitched his tent. Vayik Yosham, and they called there out the name of God by the means of this Eishel. So this Eishel, this, this inn, became the, the name of the Holy One, blessed be, he called the God of the world. After they would eat and drink, he would say to them, blessed one, food you have eaten. Do you think that I eat my food? You have eaten the food of the one who spoke and the world came into being. So it became the godly inn. Yaga of Rambad is Plishtim Yamanabim, and Avram Avinu lived in the land of Plishtim for a long time. Yamanab many days. Shirash says he lived in Plishtim more than he lived in Chabad. Never he spent 25 years, and here he was 26 years. When he was 75 years old, when he left Khadan that year. He came and, and, and lived in the plains of Mamre in Hebron. We did not find prior that he settled anywhere but there. For every year he was away from camping and continued to have traveling. And it stayed in Avram past. He moved from there and there was a famine in the land. Avram went to Egypt. In Egypt, he spent three months because Pharaoh sent him away. Immediately he went on his journeys until he came and lived in the plains of Mamre, which is Hebron. There he lived until his day was overturned. Immediately Avram traveled from there because of the disgrace that caused by light. He came to the land of the Philistines. He was 99 years old. On the, on the third day of his circumcision, the angel came to him. This total 25 years from the year he left his father's house and settled the Hebron until he came to the land of Philistines. It is written here that he lived in the land of Philistines many days, meaning more than the preceding days of Hebron. Scripture did not come to obscure, but to clarify. For if they, the days of the land of Philistines, exceeded the days of Hebron by two years or more, it would have stated plenty. It would say it plainly, I'm sorry. Hence, you must conclude that it did not exceed them by more than one year. Hence, 26 years in the land of Philistines, he immediately left there and returned to Hebron. And that year, when he, when he left Gerar, when he left the Philistines, he proceeded, he proceeded and he proceeded by binding of Isaac, well, by 12 years, as you explain the said, as explain the said, I mean, that year was 12 years before the binding of Isaac. So there he lived another 12 years in Hebron after he left Abimelech and moved on to Hebron to 26 years. So he came to Israel, he's there in Hebron 25 years. Then he moved to Plishtim. Grar, and there he was there for 26 years, and then he went back to Hebron. He was there for another 12 years, and then we come to the story of next week, the story, then the next week, the story of the Akeda. And that completes the Chumash of today. We now go to the Tanya of the day, and we are still holding the 27th chapter of the Alter Rebbe, the letter, the 27th letter, which he wrote to the, to the students of Rav Mendel Haradokha, concerning the situation that happened with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the passing of this great tzaddik. 
And he explained to them that actually, that the tzaddik is actually greater, his ruach, his spirit, what the tzaddik stands for is love and fear and muna is greater when he passes on. Because a tzaddik is open to every, every, everybody and everybody and every, and every student can connect to the tzaddik on a much deeper level than he could have connected to him when he was alive. Because when he was alive, the ruach, the spirit of the tzaddik came through the body, the vessel of the tzaddik. And automatically that was that obscured, that hid the, 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 the ruach of the tzaddik. But now that the ruach was revealed, was taken out of the body, because the body, he passed on the tzaddik, now the ruach is unlimited. Now Dr. Rebbe goes a step further. Now there's another kind of illumination from the tzaddik to his type. This gets a little Kabbalistic. However, it does not vest itself truly in their minds, as in the case of the first illumination, what I mentioned, the ruach and the spirit of the tzaddik. That mamish, that every uh, student and everybody can connect mamish to that. That derives from the ruach of the tzaddik, whereby his faith and fear and love are initially integrated and internalized within his disciples. But this level of the tzaddik, this diffusion of the tzaddik, me'ida aleim al-mayla, where radiates above them, encompassing and transcending them, for its very loftiness inhabits it from the descending and being integrated into them. That means that there's, in, that there's a great diffusion. When the tzaddik passes on, there's a great, great revelation of the tzaddik that it can't even come into the student. It only hovers over them. What is that from? He It stems from the ascent of the tzaddik, ruach, and the shama to the source of which it came from. And what is the source? Which is the chakal tapuch gadish. It's a Kabbalistic word. The orchard of the holy apples. Meaning, the spirit of Malchus of the world of Atsilus. The spirit of Malchus of the world of Atsilus, which is also the Shabbos, is called Chakal Tapuch Kadishin, because on Shabbos, everything goes back to that level. So that the Shomer Tzaddik reaches up to the orchard of the holy apples, which is this, the, the, the level of Malchus in the world of Atzim is because that's where the Tzaddik came from. And in a sense, it affects the union there between the spiritual feminine sphere of Malchus and the spiritual masculine level, the divine influx transcends it. Because the, 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 when the, the Tzaddik goes back to its source, to, to, the, to Malchus of Atzilus, comes within it, its source of Malchus Atzilus, which is higher than Idea lost mayim nukvim by the means of elevating the mind of feminine waters, which is the work of the tzaddik, by the means of the mortal in, initial spiritual arousal, constitute of all the tzaddik's actions, his taita, his divine service, in which he engaged all the days of his life, all go back to its source. So can you imagine all of this energy that the tzaddik put in, 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 in through his life comes all back to its source. Boom, there's an explosion. And it brings down even a greater light than it elicits an unbelievable light that comes down through that. So I was explained explain below, as it will be explained in the next letter, all the man's lifelong labors and att attainments are revealed from their former state of concealment and shine forth in a time of his passing. So now all the avoid of the tzaddik is generated and goes back to its source in such a powerful way that it brings about this this ascent bring down such a uh, descent of light in the tzaddik 
That's that is above and beyond it. Okay, we'll come back. Above and beyond imagination. And in this, in, in Tfilis Amalchus of Atilis, the soul source are implanted and exceedingly sublime light. This light ultimately shines down in, the, in, in this world. And they all, they all shines in the teachings and the service of the Tzad. So his divine service thus implanted lofty illuminations above, which are revealed in the sun below at the time of his passing. And these illumination and these supernal lights radiates over all his disciples. That they became servants of God through his teaching and his avoidance. In this service. And this illumination which radiates over them from above, Achnes is believing, is sight being transcended. It's so powerful that it instills in their hearts the thoughts of repentance and goodness. And all the good deeds. Which are born from this illumination of the tzaddik, which radiates from the life, the light that's implanted in 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 Kaltal Tapuchin in the orchard garden, so to say, which is another name for Malchus of Atzilus. They are called successive generations of Oshrits. Therefore, the tzaddik, when he passes on, creates such an energy that lasts for generations to come. So since the illumination themselves grow directly out of the light implanted by the tzaddik, the good deeds which these illumination in turn inspire are offshoots of second generation. This radiation is greatly hidden and concealed, just like the sun radiates to the stars from below the earth. In the Isab de Kunim, as it brought down in the Zohar, Al Moshira Bain Al Oshan, in reference to Moshira Bain, who peace be beyond him, that when he passed on, now his spark, his radiance extends to every generation to the 600,000 souls, all other souls being sparks of the general soul, as explained in Tanya in chapter 37. When Moshe Rabbeinu died, that's when he became a spashtus. That's when it extended. Now Moshe Rabbeinu became the souls of every tzaddik. And al Rebbe says, furthermore, Moshe Rabbeinu became a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu became into every Jewish soul. We all have a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu. <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu passed away thousands of years ago. His neshama continues to in, to 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 inspire, to elevate, to guide every neshama. That is in existence. So can you imagine Moshe Rabbeinu? Continue. Can you imagine the tzaddik that lived in your generation? That's like the sun, which radiates the six hundred thousand stars from below the earth. And that concludes the Tanya, the very powerful twenty seventh letter of the Alter Rebbe. It should inspire us all this letter, the meaning of a tzaddik in general, and the way that tzaddik affects the world, not only when he's alive, but if you understand what a tzaddik is, and what, is, what a real spirit of a tzaddik is, it's not his body, it's his, it's his, it's his avoider, it's a service of God, it's his love of God, it's his fear of God, it's his, his amun in the Abishta, 
that thing, that that service, that ruach goes even comes even greater. Not only that ruach come is continued to be in every world, but that ruach becomes greater and greater and greater. And we can connect to that ruach even more and more and more. Today is the 16th day of the month. 16th day of the month of Cheshven. The Tilim of today is going to be chapter 89. I'm sorry, chapter 79. 80, chapter 79, 80, 81, and 82. 79, 80, 81, and 82. And you do the chitas of the day. Tomorrow, I hope you all do the chitas of the day by yourselves. The Chumash, the seventh reading, the Tanya, and the Mitcham, the Dilim. And we'll meet again in Mitcham on Sunday, where we'll continue at 8 o'clock to start the new Pasha, Pasha's Chayesada, which starts next week on Sunday at 8 a.m. Have a wonderful and beautiful and Phenomenal Shabbos. Um.